they were assiduously gathered in prayer, with a few women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. While the day of Pentecost was ending, they found themselves together in the same place, and suddenly there came from heaven a loud noise, like a strong driving wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The narration of the Pentecost event, as told by Luke in the Acts of the Apostles, accompanied the whole chapter journey. It was the Spirit that created unity in love and reciprocal acceptance of diversity. It was He who infused courage in evangelization. We are aware of the importance of their being together, united around Mary, to welcome the Holy Spirit and to allow themselves to be guided by Him. We lived an intense time through moments of obscurity and light, always laden with significance. The revelation was effectively progressive, proportionate to the depth of the expectation, to the dynamism of seeking and the attitude of openness. This experience will remain in our life like a Pentecostal event that we will continue to discover well aware of never being able to completely penetrate the mystery that unfolds us. The 22nd General Chapter guides the whole Institute to convert itself to love and to express it as a community in the educational mission. Love is a relational reality. It needs to manifest itself to be experienced. It needs signs. The sign reveals, provokes, and sends us beyond. It involves the totality of the person. In the word that becomes flesh, the pedagogy of God is expressed by a sign that does not need to go beyond. It is Jesus, the greatest sign of God's love. His life, his gestures, his words, his examples, he steps upon our earth his days in our history. All is love. The world is looking for dialogue, respect, justice, true and profound relationships in communion and in freedom. It thirsts for love and happiness. It is in this world today that there echoes for us the appeal to allow God's love to shine through. The commitment to center our lives on love is the path that will give continuity and depth to the journeys of our communities spread throughout the world. With Mary's Eyes Mary was present in the Cenacle she prayed with Jesus' friends and devoted the Holy Spirit, sharing preoccupations and hope. Mary accompanied the church in its birth, in its spread throughout the world, and she continues to be present, especially in the difficult times of its history. We too experience this, her presence always alive in the Institute and in each community. She, the humble and courageous woman, guides us to discover where there are those who suffer for the lack of love, where life lacks meaning, where there is no joy, where one unaware of the presence of Jesus. Mary teaches us not to flee from challenges, economic crises, exploitation of natural resources, violence, 
the great problems that come from the growing phenomenon of human mobility and migration. The greatest challenge to be faced is that of helping the younger generations to perceive that God loves them. Young people thirsting for love and happiness question us. We are provoked by their request for love. They're questioning themselves on the meaning of existence, the need to realize themselves as persons, the seeking for profound relationships, the commitment to transform the present and plan for the future. Stimulate us to enter into communication with their languages and to give new dynamism to the mission with the ever more real force of the preventive system. Love urges us to exodus, to go out from self, moving toward new frontiers to make ourselves a gift. Love grows through loving. For this reason, the 22nd General Chapter has chosen accompaniment as an experience of communion and a style to express love. In the journeys of conversion toward which the chapter document guides us, we allow ourselves to be accompanied by Jesus, Word and Bread, by Mary, Mother and Teacher, by the enchanting witness of Don Bosco, by Mary Domenica Mazzarello, by the spirituality of Francis de Sales and by Teresa of Avila, but also by the persons with whom we share daily the journey of reciprocal accompaniment, the educating community, and in particular, the young people. So that this love may be concrete, we want to be a living memorial in our way of existing and acting like Jesus, reviving the Dami Hanimas Ceteratolle of Don Bosco and the entrustment of I entrust them to you of Mary Mazzarella. To be among the young people is a sign and expression of the love of God. To believe that all foreseen love is more efficacious when we witness to it as an educating community. Our hope for our educating communities is that they may be open, cynical, where urgency and missionary creativity are cultivated. May they be places of welcome, solidarity and interculture. Places for a profitable exchange that renders people attentive to the educational requests posed by immigration, poverty, the exploitation of women, in particular young women. Places in which one loves and defends the beauty of the created so that it may be a house where all can live. Between one instant and another of life, there is a hope that awaits another hope. It is frequently in these brief spaces that love lives. The force of love is the only great thing that we have.